Interesting email, Father, regarding celiac disease. Does it cause death if one with celiac receives the Eucharist, which is made with wheat? Surely, if we truly believe that the bread is now the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord, how can we possibly fear that consuming the host that our Lord will allow us to drop dead? I know of two people, one who only receives the wine and another who consumes specially made hosts. Is it a lack of faith or am I unfairly judging these people? Well, I think it's uh, perhaps a matter of knowledge, and I don't claim to have the greatest knowledge, but I, un I understand, my understanding of celiac disease is it has to do with the gluten in the wheat, right? Mm -hmm. The gluten has, has a devastating effect on the uh, celia in the intestines, right? And I know people, I guess we all know someone who is affected so adversely by this. It's a serious thing. When we consecrate the body and blood of Christ, by affecting the transubstantiation through the power of our Lord, and he becomes truly present there. I won't say truly in the bread and in the wine, because the bread and wine are gone. Okay, only the accidents remain. What we can see, what we can feel, what we can taste. The host doesn't taste any differently <clears throat> after it's consecrated than it did before. It doesn't feel any different, right? doesn't weigh any different, right? Anything you can measure about the host does not change. Even the chemical properties, as it were, we still would consider accidents, not the substance, okay? And so it will still affect the body in this way. I mean, God allows that to happen. You know, this is a mystery of faith here. So he doesn't change that. So you can actually, let's say, chemically analyze the host after consecration and see, oh, this is how he's been consecrated because we see some physical changes in here that are the result of consecration and transubstantiation. It doesn't happen that way, right? Otherwise, I mean, if you could do that, it wouldn't be the mystery of faith anymore. It requires faith to believe that our Lord is really present there. So the effect on the body is what it is. And it can be very painful. No, will someone drop dead if they receive the host? Not that I know of. I never heard of a case of celiac disease that was that severe than receiving even a piece of regular bread that one would drop dead from it. But it can cause enormous pain and suffering and be very debilitating toward a person. So our Lord, in his wisdom, gave us the two species, as it were, of the body and the blood. I don't think it's a matter, really, of someone just saying, well, look, if I go up and receive the host, like everyone else does, I'm just going to have to deal with the, the pain for the next you know, half a day of being totally debilitated, bedridden, and excruciating pain because of that. God says we don't have to go seeking that kind of pain, especially if you're a child and you have to be a student and you have to go to school and do other things for your family. You have responsibilities, even as a child, to be a good son and a good daughter. If that were an adult, then, who would be incapacitated by this, all the more reason, too, because of the duties and responsibilities they have. If the alternative is there, provided by our Lord, to receive a few drops of the precious blood from a separate chalice at the Mass, then take that as a God-given opportunity and an answer to your need at that time. But don't think that somebody is being a coward or having a lack of faith mm -hmm. for choosing that option and that alternative.